Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Jay Little. I'm a principal security engineer at Trail of Bits. Uh, my hobby over this past summer was trying to sync archive nodes and then figure out why some contracts have been self-destructed. So I'm going to quickly go over like how I did this and then share the results. Uh, in case anybody needs a brief refresher of what a self-destruct looks like, imagine like you have some contract, people are using it, they're baking cookies, the owner's keeping track of who has what cookies. Uh, then the owner wants to close up the shop, so they do a self-destruct. When they do this, the uh, owner gets all the money collected by the shop. And uh, when this happens, the code and all the storage gets removed from all the Ethereum uh, clients on the node. So because of that, uh, uh, the self-destruct is a type of internal transaction. So in order to get this information, you need to run a full node with archiving. And these are uh, some curated uh, command line arguments I found from Stack Overflow that'll be performance and do archiving. And then you wait a few weeks, and then you uh, uh, run into some crashing errors. Uh, it turns out this summer was a bad time to try to get a working archive node. Uh, these have been fixed, but it kind of felt like I was making a, a Zen garden out of my chain data folder. I'd have to like remove it and start again. Uh, so I still wanted to make some results. So uh, luckily, Etherscan has uh, an API that will give you a list of all the transactions to a contract and all the internal transactions too. Uh, it took about a few hours to download. Etherscan lets you do about five queries per second. And uh, here are some results. So total, uh, there's been about 2 million contracts created before block 6 million on mainnet. Uh, and of those, 32,000 are empty. And a subset of these empty ones uh, have been self-destructed. It's a little hard to tell the difference between the two. Uh, so as we kind of apply some more heuristics for like, oh, is, is this self-destruct interesting or not? Like is the account uh, that caused the self-destruct the original uh, creator or not, or did it send money back to the original uh, account or some new one? Uh, we get down to just 25 total uh, self-destructs ever that send more than 0.1 ETH. Uh, this was kind of surprising, so I started digging through the results, and uh, it turns out there's a lot of duplicate and noise. Uh, there's 10,000 uh, copies of this contract that uh, kind of read code in a loop, and uh, some Stack Overflow post says this was a network DOS. Uh, then there's, uh, this one's kind of unfortunate. Uh, there's been about 6,000 ETH lost by people sending uh, some money to address zero and then not giving any data. So that's, these are gone forever. Uh, then there's about 2,000 of these where there's 6,000 nulls. Nulls is just a stop. It doesn't do anything. So no contracts created. So it's empty. Uh, then there's uh, this thing that's really annoying. Uh, there's uh, about 3,000 of these contracts that just do a push and then a self-destruct. So they just kind of uh, transfer one or two away. Uh, and when you look at an ether scan, it looks like a huge mess. And it turns out that what these are doing is uh, they will self-destruct and then that triggers a transaction and then it kind of does like a little bit of a chain reaction. And this was like really annoying to filter out. So we do all this filtering. And we're left with about 2,000 contracts that have been uh, like legitimately self-destructed that had code, and now they don't. And uh, if we, like again, if we apply some heuristics, there's actually only, like out of the 25 that have sent 0.1 ETH, uh, there's only 16 that have sent more than one Ether uh, when they were being destroyed. Uh, so for a few of these kind of hi highlights of this result, uh, this one, uh, the original owner actually uh, destroyed his contract and uh, sent 50 ETH to zero, rip. Uh, then uh, this one, I got excited because I'm like, ooh, 300 ETH in a self-destruct. But it turns out when you look at previous transactions, uh, the owner was intentionally changed by the original creator, so this probably wasn't an attack. Uh, then the rest of the results are actually pretty much just gambling. Uh, this one uh, had a few Ether in it, uh, 65. And uh, it, it had a cool address. It begins with dice. So you know it's like a trustworthy gambling contract. Uh, and then here's another one uh, that transferred a few ether. This actually had source code uh, with some, and a pretty legit looking website. Uh, this is a, uh, a contract that was attacked and uh, uh, the attacker called a couple functions and got a bounty of 0.2 ETH. Uh, I'm actually the original author of this contract. Uh, it was just a honeypot uh, with no trap, uh, just honey. 
and I wanted to see if anybody was scanning uh, binary-only contracts and attacking them, and the answer uh, is yes. This happened about a day after I put the contract up on mainnet. And for an example that's not me, uh, here's an old contract. Uh, it turns out to be uh, a open source, like dungeon style navigation game. Uh, but they copied and pasted some code and removed uh, the only owner check on Mortal. So somebody called it and got three ETH. Um, so this is just a quick overview of uh, what I was doing this summer. And uh, it turns out only a small fraction of contracts have been destroyed when they had value. Uh, so I'm looking for other heuristics to apply. And uh, if you have any questions or are curious about this kind of analysis, uh, I'll be happy to chat outside. And thank you for your attention.